Yes. Julia, I'm so glad that you asked to talk about Dom's TikTok. Are you are you referring to her nail drama? Yes. <laughs> Literally, I was like, this could be like a viral sound because it was so funny. I was dying. Our, our favorite comment was like, this audio has so much potential. It, no, it actually did. But I was like crying. I was laughing so hard. She's hilarious. Oh, so funny. Um, For the listeners, if you guys are unaware, Dom has been having some nail drama and she <laughs> thinks that her nails are giving princess fiona from shark <laughs> it's actually it's really something it's so it's, relatable no it's so funny also i miss you guys um i just felt like had we had more time together in dallas it really could have just been us three against the world you know yeah. no i know i, I think we would be hanging out like the last like month before we took off yes yeah but, that's when yeah. we finally like got to meet and everything but yeah. I feel like a little piece of my heart is like in Texas. Like I know that's that cheesy song. Like, wasn't it like I left my heart in Texas or something, uh, or yeah, something yeah. like that? Something. Yeah. Um, but I feel like after living there, even though I'm not from there, Hunter's from there. I just feel like I'll always just have a little special spot. Well, there's in Texas. there's like a, a true sense of like comfort there. That yeah. We'll always like going home to visit. It'll feel like going home to visit. It'll be like cozy and comfortable. Like yeah. Visiting home versus like I don't know. Yeah. So we're, yeah, we're in a good place. Yes. How is Nashville? It's good. Yeah. It's so good. Um, we're still kind of in that phase where you're getting used to your surroundings, like getting used to your house. Like it still feels uncomfortable almost. I, but keep, I keep joking around that like, we'll hear like ice fall out of the ice machine and we're like, what the hell is that? Like who's yeah. out there? You know, yeah. we're, not, we're still not used to the sound. Still don't know what like light switches do what. Getting used to all that. I think it stuff. takes a while too to like walk in your house and be like, okay, this is like home. Even though like this, we love our house. We're obsessed with it. It's so comfortable. But to make it feel like yours, it just takes a little bit. Yeah. Do you feel like you've been able to get into any sort of routine? We were just talking about how like moving and reno lifestyle is the worst. That's the worst part for yeah. sure. No, no routine. We literally, we were like, we feel like we're on vacation because you just wake up and you're like, well, what should I do? Obviously working and everything, trying to get the house ready. We have like people coming in and out all the time for like different, you know, looking at water filters and, you know, different like house things, like adult things that are really boring. Um, and that's about to happen. Yeah, we're not cooking a ton because of COVID. Everything's like, there's a lot of stuff that's like to go. So we're every morning we're like, what should we get for breakfast this morning? Where should we go? Where should yeah. we go for lunch? What about dinner? And we've eaten out so much. So it's like kind of pulling back on that and getting in a routine. And we kind of started that yesterday. Really. Yeah, we're really like, trying because I think that makes you feel settled, you know? Yeah. Also, by the way, Julia, I couldn't agree with you more on your coffee that you've been talking about. How it's just, I, I too like bad coffee. I understand I the craft coffee thing. It's just not for me. Like I prefer the worse the coffee is, I think the better it tastes to me. Oh yeah, like gas station, like yes. sign me up. Best coffee ever. Yes. yes. I did a deal with 7-Eleven or I'm pretty sure it was 7-Eleven like two oh, years yeah. ago yes. for gas station coffee. And they were like, are you sure? I'm like, no, no, like you don't understand. Like this like, is perfect for me. <laughs> this is so organic. Like I love your coffee. I know. I just, I try craft coffee and I just can't get on board. It's just too like flavorful for me or something. I don't know. What yeah. I think I kind of have one foot in one foot out. Yeah, like I appreciate craft, but I can chug some crappy coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. you're a team player. Yeah. You actually, I feel like you're kind of that way with a lot of your life, just in general. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'd say you so. a lot, you know? Hunter's very open minded. He will literally try anything. He will, I don't know. You just are open to a lot of different things. Yeah, I still low key have my preferences that, like, I'll fight for yeah. at the end of the day. But yeah, pretty open to go with the Probably thing. one of the most open minded people I know. Yeah, maybe so. I think so. Um, you guys are both like specific in taste too, though, at the same time. Like, you know what you like. Yeah. And you're just very knowledgeable in so many different, like, random things. And I feel like most people are like, yeah, I think that's okay. But you guys, like, actually know what you're talking about, you know? I guess. I don't know. I know. We're also like old, it feels like. <laughs> We're like, we, we've had a little, a few years of like marriage and like, obviously, like, professional work and stuff like that that kind of helped define like the route we're going in life, what we're doing, what we desire, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I guess we are strong. Because we're not old. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it feels that way. 
I know. I feel like it's sad because we're 29 and I'm like, I literally feel like 21. Like I want to be like a TikTok star. I <laughs> love <laughs> Hailey Bieber's fashion. Like I'm stuck in 21 year old's body. I don't understand it. Yeah. Like, and I think we feel sometimes old, like in the space we're in, yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot of like Kinsey, like you're so, like you seem so young and it's like amazing where you're at. But like, mature. At but time. yeah, mature. Yeah, like yeah. In, in the sense, yeah, like you're so mature, but like we know you're young. You're much younger than we are, but you carry yourself like we would. And so it's like really cool to be around people like yourself. But it ends up being around like we're 30, basically hanging around a bunch yeah. of like 24 year olds. I know. Which is nothing, no problem with that. Like we, we appreciate it. Keeps us young. <laughs> it keeps you young. You guys can still be TikTok stars. Yeah. Um, speaking of, yes, yeah, so I'm 23, guys. We had this very long talk, probably like two months ago at this point um about like my dating life (laughs) so now that you guys are in nashville this is my new thing i think that i need to be with a country star so if you know anyone Mm. hunter honestly you're really the guy to set me up you are one of the few that i would actually trust um and i i I actually have a guy for you we we actually we cannot just close (laughs) this but we live near a country star we obviously can't say who it is but like right there like Ooh. literally on our street. Very exciting. We'll, t- we'll tell you after, but. <laughs> okay, I can't wait for this. Speaking yeah, of finding love, um, can you guys tell the story of where you met? I know like you met in college, but I need some more details. Yes. Okay. So wait, do you want to tell it first? You tell it first go, and then I'll go tell ahead, it. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Basically, I'll try and keep it short and concise. We, um, we were at a sorority fraternity mix, uh, mixer, what mixer they call it? Yeah, yeah. at a bar and um hunter was actually not in the frat but he was there with some of um his football teammates and <laughs> he came in and just came up to me on the dance floor and like literally right when i saw him i was like i always say it was like love at first sight which i think is like the cheesiest thing ever and i never believed that i was like that's literally like a fairy tale like phrase but it's like this little like thing that you feel when you see someone it's like a little sparkle and you're just like so captivated by them and I just remember seeing him and thought he like his smile (laughs) is so charming and um we started talking he got my number and then we kind of separated for the night and then later on we got together and we literally stayed up till like 5 a.m talking we spent every day together since that it was just like instantly just a click yeah I think our conversation after we met we like met on like the dance floor at this like little bar talked then and she said we separated but it was really about like once we came back together and had like deeper conversation we had i think four or five hours of conversation every night in a row for like 10 nights yeah and just like getting to know each other and that i think really like set a foundation for one what we're big on is like communication we've always talked about that but just like truly getting to know each other yeah and i think um what one of the good things is that I feel like a lot of guys these days are maybe a little bit timid with like going up to girls or like now it's like dating apps right and Hunter's like so outgoing literally to the point of like I'm like okay you don't need to like talk to everybody (laughs) so I feel like that was probably really nice for you you know to meet a lot of people and meet girls and stuff like before we were dating and you came up to me like I would have been too shy yeah Um, and I feel like that's just kind of a a small thing that's looked past for guys like you need to be like outgoing and just like go up to girls and be like hey and just be cool yeah and a piece of truth about the story that we don't always tell but it is like an important factor and not ashamed of this by any means but it was actually myself and two of my roommates uh other teammates on my football team we were uh playing a game that night of who could get the most numbers and Mm -hmm. it was (laughs) so it was a game i had come up with truly because my roommates were just so um timid timid. and so it was a way for me to be like hey i want to meet people like y'all need to go meet people too like let's put this like little game together and that's how it like happened where i was like able to separate from them and meet julia and they were able to go meet some women and stuff like that as well regardless it all it all worked out yeah. I mean it's kind of looking back I'm like oh dang like great I was just a casualty of the game but no we actually <laughs> connected so it just yeah, yeah, yeah. That way. what year of college was this we were um it was like the first semester junior. of our junior year we both transferred in actually as sophomores and we lived on the same floor in the same apartment building for one full year and we never met yeah isn't that weird wow yeah. wait Hunter where did you transfer from uh, Texas State in San Marcos. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, backstory: we grew up one town away from each other. Yeah. Like my my parents are like currently building a house, probably like five minutes from their old house. So yeah. Hunter and I grew up in like the same area. Yeah. yeah. And my, my parents still live like really close to where I think you grew up now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they moved yes. that way. So it's wild. So close. So at what point were you like, yeah, we're going to get married? Um, like in like a couple days in. Yeah. You were like, I'm, we're, we're going to I get think married. I said like, I'm going to marry you. Like we're going to get married. Yeah. We kind of like <laughs> fell really fast and hard. I actually had just come out of a like long-term relationship and it was probably like two or three years and it was Mm -hmm. long distance also. And I had, I mean, I'm a couple of weeks just fresh out of that relationship. And I was like, I do not want to like be with another guy for a long time. I need a break. I had had boyfriends for like five years and uh, I wasn't interested, but I was, we were so like connected. Like it was just kind of, there was so much chemistry. I was like, I just don't see how I'm going to like. We were both kind of in a similar place of like not ready for a relationship or not like thinking we were ready when yeah. we met and that almost like put our guards down a little bit and allowed us to like really get to know each other yeah oh when yeah. what's your proposal story um nothing crazy we waited till well hunter wanted to get married like in college like true no, texas man i, I remember telling you that I, I would have been down to like get engaged in college and then probably married like a little bit post I think that's so cute. I love that about you because, yeah, like, yeah. I like that Texas, some Texas boys, that might be a generalization, they're a little bit more traditional. They're like not afraid of marriage, where, like, yeah. you get on the coast and the guys are like, oh, I'm going to wait till I'm like 35. Like, I won't be, you know, locked down. And it's like, that's not necessarily cool. Like, it's so cute when, you know, guys yeah, are ready to, like start a family and stuff. So I really like that about him. But I was like, I think we should just wait till we're graduated so we can, like, wedding plan and just have that be like the whole next chapter versus yeah. like trying to do school and all that stuff um so proposal you can tell yeah we, well we designed the ring together and so she knew that like we're getting a ring basically so there was not much of a surprise element there yeah and we were living with my parents at the time post-college and julia's the one that answered the door when the ring arrived once it was delivered so yeah. i was like <laughs> shoot she knows it she knows it's here like great so I waited like three months. Like I think she was expecting it to be like right after that. And I waited a little bit and almost like made her forget that we had a ring. Yeah. It was my goal and actually ended up doing it on her birthday, which had some surprise element to it. But I mean, not really. That's probably the day you were expecting, I would say. Yeah, I wasn't sure. But he basically sent me on like a little scavenger hunt, which was really cute. Like at our, to all of our favorite places, like the coffee shop down the street from our house and then I went to like the spa and got like a massage and there's little notes he had like gone around and left notes with everybody which was cute and then when I got to the location it was like around this big pond and um on the sidewalk there were like every 15 feet or so he wrote like the different milestones of our relationships in chalk so it'd be like the day that we met and like with the date and then, you know, our first kiss, the day that we got Noah, like when we graduated college, like all of our milestones of our relationship. And then he was at the end. So yeah, that's cute. <laughs> that's so yeah. sweet. Yeah, yeah. And, and one thing we're talking about, like a lot of like the great, like, oh, we met and fell in love and got married. But like, there's, it wasn't like rainbows and butterflies the whole time. No. Yeah. We, we yeah. had some ups and downs just like anybody. Um, and before we got engaged and yeah. times where we thought we wouldn't stay together. Yeah. I and... thought we were going to break up. Times yeah. Wait, no way. I yeah. can't yeah. picture that. Wait, like yeah. how serious were you like maybe not staying together? I need to know this. Well, it was only like kind of for a period of time. We kind of had some complications with my ex-boyfriend. Yeah, exes in general, like other relationships we had going, like just stuff like that where we, it was like a good year where we were like, like fighting to make it work yeah I think because we were so fresh out of relationships like the ex is still like I it was not like there were even still feelings there but maybe just like some fallout that hadn't been cleared yet so obviously that's always gonna cause like friction and issues so we went back and forth on that stuff for a while and we just were like you know arguing a lot about it but at the end of the day we were like we honestly can't see our lives without each other so we need to like literally just like stack up and decide to just like put it all in the past and like move on and just start our life let's just forget that but we were just really young yeah you know trying to figure out how to be mature but julia's backstory like she said was coming out of a relationship with her ex mine was i i had a long-term relationship before that and then had like a year of 
being single and like having fun, like college life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's what carried over into our relationship was like my fun college life. And then like the most recent things for both of us was like my fun college life and her ex-boyfriend was kind of getting intertwined and you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So I would say that didn't put a damper by any means, but like it, Just, it forced us to go through like what any relationship would go through, like your ups and downs, your battles, your fights. Jealousy, and like, yeah, stuff to work through, exactly. you know, all that kind of stuff. I think that's so important to share though, because now, especially having like married friends, I have a lot of friends who are a lot older than me or even like pastors, things like that, that I'm really close with. And they will tell me like more so behind the scenes of like what was really going on or like the problems. And I'm like, see that, I wish that that was shared more because I feel like so often people just break up because it's like, oh, the second there's a problem, it's not right. And like, obviously that's not the right thinking, but people just don't talk about it. No, totally. And I think that it's just hard. Those are just like such intimate things that it's like scary to like expose, you know, real relationship stuff, right? But um, I totally agree. And one other thing that's really cool, my sister um, actually made this comparison. This is kind of the other direction, not with conflict, but she, she's been married now a couple of years as well. And like her, her and her husband are like so happy together and their relationship is really chill. And she's sometimes was like, you know, it feels weird that everything is just so balanced and like calm. There's no like fighting there's, you know, it's just fine. And someone was like, yeah, well you get, when you're in like toxic relationships or, you know, when you're working through things, you get so used to there being like combat or an issue that when you're married and you feel like, oh, this is like boring. Um, it's actually just because it's like a healthy relationship and there's not a lot of conflict going on. So of course you're gonna have your ups and downs, but a lot of people think like, oh, like how do I keep it, you know, spicy or alive, or I just feel so stagnant. It's like, that's married life. Like you're literally just chilling with your best friend, you know, and then, and you yeah. fight like family members kind of like how you'd fight with like your parents or your sister or brother. It's just like that, you know? Totally. Yeah, that's really good. I listened to a podcast. I think it's actually the City Confidential, like a yeah. year or two ago. And Lauren was talking about how, um, basically, like how she had like associated certain things as comfort. So like chaos is comfort. And when she yeah. met Michael, he it wasn't like chaotic, and it was a healthy relationship. And so she was like, I don't know if this is it, or like yeah. she. Was, I just remember yeah. saying she was like really struggling because all she'd known is chaos. So when she was in something that was healthy, it was actually really hard for her to accept, I think, like, the health of the relationship because that wasn't what she was used to. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That's and exactly I, that, what I That's yeah. very well summarized. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, I would say that's spot on. There's, like, almost endorphins that are released when you're, like, in a fight and you get, like, a high from It's like it adrenaline, Yeah, think, adrenaline, something. exactly. Yeah. And so when you're not having that, you're almost like, well, like, you know, is this, like, what life is like moving forward you know I know we like Hunter and I hate fighting we both don't like it and whenever we get in arguments or fights like we're both like we don't like that Mm -hmm. how do we avoid that from happening because like it makes us sad and so we try to I don't know figure out ways to just avoid miscommunication as much as possible obviously it's always gonna happen we bicker a lot we always say bicker a lot like daily kind of like give each other shit about things but it's very um, rare that we're like in a fight and if we get in a fight it maybe will last like two hours yeah maybe like once a year like a like a really big one yeah but other than that just lots of little fights you know I love like when you guys talk about relationships especially on your channel or give advice Mm because also it feels like when I will talk to you guys about something it literally feels the exact way on your YouTube videos which I think is like why you guys do so well but oh. also I would actually like trust your advice. I'm like, okay, what do you think about this? Like I was telling someone the other day, I'm like, there's probably like three people or three like couples that I actually really trust and would actually trust to like set me up with someone because I'm so picky. And I was like, Julian Hunter being one of them, like oh, that's wow. pretty much it. That's such an honor. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Flattered. Thank yeah, you. I always say, I think Hunter's the best advice giver probably over me. Sometimes I'm a little bit too nice or gentle. You're like really honest. Like yeah, but sometimes up. I'm a little harsh. A little I, harsh. I can be like kind of direct where I could say like, yeah, screw him, like break up with him. And then you break up with the guy of your dreams kind of thing, you know? But Hunter, <laughs> like I, I've seen him give advice to like my sisters, our friends, like everybody. And it's always like, 
pretty spot on. Like they'll be like, that guy's using you or like, don't, you should not hook up with him because he definitely, that's all he cares about. And, and it always ends up being true. Yeah. Like people are like, Oh my, I'm so glad I listened. I'm like, wow. Like I just hit it on the head. I don't know how. Hmm. Yeah. I think you give, you both give really good advice. Like I think you're pretty much always right. Can't think of a time when you would be wrong in these situations. How is your dating life? Any progress? Julia, it's like literally, it's not even that there's no progress. It's just that if, here's, here's actually the reality of what was happening. I, it, Monday through Friday, I'm just so busy. Yeah. And if a boy reaches out to me, it's exhausting, which is a sign of like, I'm not into it, right? Totally. But then the weekend hits. Not that I'm seeing them, but I'm like, you know, I'm bored now. I'm not working. So like, right. maybe I'll reply. That's kind of where I'm at. And then also, it's difficult. We've obviously, you guys know this, we've gone through this, but it's difficult, I think, with the job that I have at the age that I am, yeah. where all of my friends are just like right out of post, not all my friends, but like most of the people that I know here are like right out of postgrad, things like that. We're just in like different, yeah. I don't know, we're like in different phases, things like that. I just need to meet someone who I know you guys keep saying I need to meet someone older than me. And you know what? I think I'm finally getting on board with that idea. Yeah. And especially because boys slash men kind of develop a little bit slower. So I think just to get somebody at your maturity level, you're going to need to go up a few years. Yeah. Um, and I'd also think that you'll be with someone or, or find someone that they'll need to have like the same work ethic as you. Like you got a lot going on in your life, like managing a lot of different things. And I think your work ethic at your age is like part of none. So yeah. Gotta find someone that like understands working and like your work ethic. Totally. You got a law on your plate. 100 percent Sorry, my memory card on my recorder just got full. Wow. So I'm just putting okay. okay, I just put a new one in. We're good. Yes. So honestly, it will be like a miracle when I meet someone. That's kind of how I'm how I'm viewing it, you know? Yeah. I feel like, oh gosh, if I were I'm such an introvert. I think you and I are the same. We're like extroverted introverts. It's like it would be so exhausting to like meet so many people. Like even meeting people here in Nashville, I'm like, this is so great. But the other night I was like, we've had like three social events this week and I'm tapped. Like I got to stare at the wall for like a day and just like, I can't talk to anybody. <laughs> it's a lot. Exactly. Like I need to be home reading. That's how yeah. I feel. Yeah. I just can't do it. And then there's times where I will be, I mean, I'm typically like always outgoing, but where I will like be the life of the party and then I come home and I'm like, I need two weeks to like not talk to anyone, see yes. anyone, especially with the past year. Like I really haven't seen anyone. Right. Totally. And then I'm like, my almost like social anxiety is like through the roof because I don't have to do it anymore. So I'm like, yeah. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. So we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be, um, also I trust you guys. So if you guys meet anyone, I need yeah. to, yeah. we'll, we'll start racking up the single boys here and we'll keep them on reserve for when you come to visit. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep <laughs> my you. eyes peeled for some book club boys for you. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Book club boys. Genius. You know, I didn't even think about that. I think that yeah, would be awesome. Exactly. Yeah. You guys can bond over your book collection that you haven't read. Yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Okay, I want to talk about social strategy. You guys okay. are killing it online. I've said this to you so many times. I'm like, I know that we're friends, but also my favorite bloggers. I'm like, I don't think I've missed a video in Aww. who knows how long. Um, but I want to talk about social strategy and growth. Yeah. Julie and I have talked about this when we went to brunch without you. Sorry, Hunter. <laughs> um, <laughs> but let's start with growth on Instagram. This is actually like the number one thing people wanted to hear from you guys. Okay. even to the point of like reward style strategy. So growing on Instagram, obviously I know there's so much that goes into this, but like, what are your top tips? Oh my God. Okay. Honestly, we talk about this all the time and I'll like look at our Instagram followers and we're like, how did we even get those? Like, I actually don't know. Um, it's a combination of a lot of things, right? I think nowadays, especially like being on as many platforms as possible is always, they're all going to feed off of each other, right? Yeah. So your YouTube, growth is going to help your Instagram growth. Your TikTok growth will help your Instagram growth um, and vice versa. They all kind of, you know, cross penetrate. Let's, let's, let's throw like a little caveat in there. So it's like, you're not watering yourself down too much by like over diversifying where your content yeah. is, um, I guess being displayed, but using those to your advantage, if you do it the right way, it can like really help. Yeah. And I think, um, I think right now, like 
Instagram to me as a platform like today feels like a very challenging place to grow. I would say the ways that you kind of grow are by collaborating with other people, um, kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, word of mouth, like people promoting you or you promote others, just like all that exchange, because it's really hard to get discovered unless you are creating like beautiful photography, because that's kind of the style of Instagram, right? Um, so, you know, think about the explore page is always like these amazing images. And if you're just like an everyday girl like me, uh, my pictures are probably not getting on the discover page that often. So um, that, and then I also think like when I started to uh, actually gain some traction was when I did a lot of Instagram stories. I think stories are huge. People love them. And I mean, I know that's like all I watch. It's basically like, it's like YouTube vlogs, but in a shorter format, I feel like you just get it yes. like every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I always tell people just like, don't underestimate uh, just like everyday content. Like what coffee are you drinking? What, you know, what leggings are you ordering on Amazon? What, you know, errands are you running? Just like every day, you just want to feel like you're hanging out with a friend. Um, so just sharing those things that you think are uninteresting, I think are interesting to people. Yeah, I think we saw a lot of growth on YouTube once we started to vlog more and, and really show behind the scenes of our life. And that's really like, let people in on our life. And so we took that and we kind of collectively focus on Julie's Instagram growth, like as the primary Instagram. And so it was like, let's use the strategy of YouTube and vlogs and showing behind the scenes of our life. Let's take that and put that on Instagram as well for stories. And so as Julie mentioned, like stories is really great for engagement. I don't know how much that actually affects growth, growth I know. Um, but it's really great for like taking the growth you do have day after day and keeping them engaged with your content is through stories. Uh, but I would say growth itself is a combination of like Julie mentioned, collabs. Things. It could be a combination of like getting on the discover page, like she mentioned, kind of like getting noticed on Instagram, but really we think, or we see, the primary uh, growth from Instagram being from other platforms, like people yeah. finding us on YouTube, watching us on YouTube, and then going over and following on Instagram. I think we always say that uh, growth, like when people say, how do I grow on social media? I, there's really everyone, every creator says this, there's no formula, but there truly isn't. It's like, I don't know how to do it, but you basically, if I can give any advice is try a lot of different things, try different content types, talking about different things. It's like A-B testing, right? And seeing like what people respond to, like what are you good at talking about? And then if people are attracted to that, then take that and run with it. Like yeah. keep creating content about that until you start to get little wins here and here. And it's like a very slow, steady build. Um, so always experimenting, trying new stuff. And yeah, I think right now I tell everybody, if you want to get started, like get on TikTok. It's like, for me, the number one area for like discovery right now. And I see people growing so fast. Um, I know girls that tried to grow their Instagram and like didn't get anywhere for years. And then they get on TikTok and they like shot up to a couple hundred K. Now they're growing on Instagram. It all feeds off of each other. It's just finding like being in the right place at the right time, a little bit of luck, a little bit of talent, you know, all that stuff. One thing we always talk about to add to it is you can't grow without discovery. And so it's like, where are you going to yeah. be discovered? Like wh where and how are you going to be discovered? And right now, TikTok is like a great area for discovery. I agree. Sorry, we have a lot to say about this. Can you tell? <laughs> no, I like keep going. I yeah. also have found on Instagram, and this is from like meetings with Instagram, things they've told me, but typically when you want to grow on Instagram, Instagram wants you to use Instagram. So if you're using every tool that Instagram offers, they're going to push it, especially their latest. So like right now with Reels, I wasn't going to use Instagram how to in like a year. And all of a sudden I started posting reels and all of a sudden my account was like growing out of nowhere, like pretty quickly. And so that was another thing that I've noticed just like with my own account that that has like really helped. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Like obviously Instagram wants you to stay on their platform versus going to TikTok. And so their version of TikTok is reels. And so mm -hmm. if you're using reels, they're going to, that's probably like the primary thing on Instagram right now to grow, I would say is reels because their biggest competitor right now is TikTok. Yeah. And I think too, like it's people that, I mean, it's one thing to like really try and enter into this as like a career, but 
I will, I wouldn't underestimate the amount of effort that it takes to put into multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. Like it literally is a full-time job. So I think maybe the misconception about social media, when, you know, you see the, the lifestyle and you see people that have followers, you're like, oh my God, that looks so fun. And just like talk about clothes and, you know, my life and everything. But really like I wake up and all I do is make TikToks, photos we're recording our life for videos yeah. like that's what we capture content all day and it is not easy to like put content on that many platforms but I always explain to people it's like no different than a nine to five job so what am I going to sit in an office nine to five and send emails for a corporate company or am I going to create content nine to five so it's it is literally a job it's no less work than any other nine to five yeah job. people see the final result or the product that you're creating they don't see what goes into the creation of it or like the emails and the contract negotiations and all that's exchanged a lot of people do have management we actually uh don't have any management so we run all that on the back end but it's really just preference like it it's depends on like who does what we actually have a team of two of us which is somewhat rare in the space so we're able to get by yeah yeah that is so helpful having it's, two especially for editing that yeah. was like I don't know how like people, girls like you do it on your own. I'm like, I, I don't think we would be where we were if we didn't have both of us because I just can't imagine. Like, how are you not so overwhelmed? I am so overwhelmed all the time. I did end up hiring an editor because remember when you guys were telling me I need to do other videos. And so I started doing other videos and I, I noticed have that. those edited. Yeah. So, so that's not me editing oh, and that has changed my life. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, we need their info. Yeah. You're able to create more and like still continue on with your life without being watered down. So that's awesome. Yeah. Wait, do you edit, do they edit your vlogs or just like your sit down videos? No, because I'm like too afraid to have my vlogs be edited. I know. I know. So uh, I do those, but any sit down videos and my main thing too is that like, I love filming those. I love doing that. But for some reason in recent years, I hate editing them. And mm -hmm. I've never been like that before. So I don't know what it is. So that was my main reason as to why I wasn't making those videos, as to why I wasn't growing. So then I was like, I just need to hire someone to do it because it's taking too much of my time to where I could be putting that time elsewhere totally. and I'll actually like film the videos. So Yay. it's been a good move. That's awesome. That's a smart move. Very smart move. <laughs> yeah. One, one, one last thing to come back to the growth aspect. Yeah. It, and this is something that kind of clicked a second ago when you said that you still edit your vlogs is really like it's so underrated how valuable it is to just be yourself online because oh it's like you live in a world like social media is a world where everyone's kind of trying to be like the person they see on on their phone like the person they see on instagram there's like a, a new there's like a mold of like what it's like to be an instagrammer and it's yeah. like if you can step out of that mold and just like be your own version of like who you're going to be on instagram by being yourself there's, it's like so valuable and we can't like speak to that enough. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like it is, I feel like people, you can just feel when someone's being themselves or when they're not, there's just this sense of like what they're radiating off. I don't know. People can like smell it like right away. And I feel like even the first maybe year or two that I was on Instagram, I like loved these like super aesthetic feeds that were, you know, like very stylized and the photos looked beautiful and everything. And that's how I did my feed for so long. And one day I like, I realized I was like, this is like not, I love looking at this type of feed, but this isn't really, I'm just like kind of an everyday girl. I'm sharing literally like recipes and like, pic you know, pictures with my yeah. dog and stuff. And I don't, need to have an aesthetic feed just because I like to look at that and I literally just like let go of those expectations and I just started taking photos of the things I liked and I feel like that's when it really like when I started just being myself and not trying so hard I feel like that really helps so just seriously be yourself and it shows yeah lot. what made me think of that is when you said you edit your vlogs because it's like it's hard to give that up like we don't we don't give that up I don't see us giving that up for like a long time because yeah. vlogs are when we're most vulnerable and so it's exactly. like what is someone else gonna like put up on of me on the internet you know it's like I want control over that it's like a control aspect but it all comes back to like just being yourself and like honestly we could all probably get to the point where we give our vlogs away to someone for them to edit just because we're comfortable with ourselves. Well, and you always have those shots of you like in the morning, like with no bra on, you're like, you know, it's like a clip that you would cut out, but you don't want to give that to an editor, you know? Exactly. Especially if like, 
I guess this isn't really a problem right now, but if like someone else is in my blog, especially in college, when I would mm -hmm. hire editors for certain things, I've never done it for vlogs because I know what someone else would feel comfortable with having, you know what I mean? Totally. It is a control thing, but it's also yeah. exactly what you said, Hunter. Like you're way more vulnerable in vlogs. So I'm like, I don't, I, I know one day eventually I'll probably have to give that job to someone, but yeah. I just am not ready for that. Yeah, I no, know. same, same. I mean, we agree with you there. Yeah. That's but funny. really it just all comes back to like, growth wise on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, wherever you are, create something that you're proud of and like that is you and like you will grow. Yeah, I would say to sum it up, uh, be yourself, try new things, new content types all the time to test and see what people respond to and then go after those things more and more. And then also diversify onto multiple platforms. And remind yourself to be yourself again. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Okay, last question. What are some of yeah. your like reward style best practices? Okay, reward style best practices. Um, I would say one of my number one things is I like to look at uh, like each week I'll go on to the back end and look at what links are performing. So let's say I show you know a couple of different items in a week, like what was the top seller pretty much, and then likely like somebody maybe missed when I posted about that because a lot of the times you know you don't look at someone's stories every day um I'll just like repulse that item be like in case you missed it like I showed these Amazon leggings and like everyone was obsessed with them yeah. and here they are again this is the sizing I'll like just repulse things multiple times and usually if it's done well once it will do well again so constantly looking at those top performers and just like repulsing them um it just means like oh, okay people liked that so i'll share it again because maybe somebody missed it so that's definitely a tip um i also love to link literally everything to like to know it on instagram because it basically creates like a library that people can just refer back to at any time so if it's living on there that's so easy. I'm still trying to figure out how to get people to like to know it. I think they feel like they have to buy it or something, but I'm like, it's a free service. Literally just, it's like an Amazon storefront basically, but yeah. of multiple, everything that you ever talk about. So really those, both of those two do. things are the, to sum those specific two things up, yeah. it, it's truly like keeping it available for people to find beyond just the 24 hours of like a swipe up link, whether you're posting it again or keeping it in a highlight, like allowing something or a place for someone to come back to and find it again if they missed it like you said or if mm -hmm. they didn't have a chance to like shop during those first 24 hours like maybe they're at work yeah. and they see it it's like they're not in a shopping mindset yeah i would say the biggest thing is like look at your data um so i look at that all the time even like things from the past year that i've done well um they're just patterns and you can start to see like oh my like i kind of looked at my top performing links and i was like okay my audience really likes like really simple things it's like mm -hmm. jeans or like a basic tee or dress and I was like oh that's so funny because sometimes I feel like that's boring but when I'm looking at data that's what people like and that's what they're buying so like I should definitely make sure that I'm sharing more of that so things like that it's just really helpful to look at, at the data yeah and if people find something interesting on YouTube they might find it interesting on Instagram so showing it a second time on a different platform and yeah kind of diverse, diversifying where you're actually publishing that information exactly that's good wow i'm nothing on like to know it all day today that's what that's my plan now oh yeah <laughs> it's like i love like to know it it's the best oh my god well thank you guys so much for coming on thank yeah. you. i can always so, visit you guys in nashville and find yeah. my country star um but where can they find you <laughs> okay so we are primarily on youtube i would say if you're a new listener you don't know who we are um that's we vlog our literally our whole life um, so you can watch us there. And then obviously I, I'm on stories every 